Hello and welcome to part one of my Dwarf Fortress tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn how to install and set up our very first game of Dwarf Fortress. So without further ado... Since this is most likely your first time playing Dwarf Fortress, the easiest thing to do is to download the starter pack, formerly known as the Lazy Noob pack. So let's fire up the old internets and search for Dwarf Fortress Starter Pack. If your Google's working right, this should be one of your first search results, the Perry Dexis Errant Starter Pack. Now the reason we want the Starter Pack is it not only contains the base game, but a lot of utilities and tools to go along with it to make it a lot easier starting out. So once you're on this page, all you gotta do is download it here and you'll be good to go. Once it's done downloading, open the zip file and find the place you want to put it. I like making a folder that says Dwarf Fortress so I know where everything is. So once you make that, you just drag and drop everything from the zip file onto the new folder. Easy peasy. And just like that, you've installed Dwarf Fortress. Pretty easy. Now, in order to start the game, you're going to want to click here where it says Starter Pack Launcher. You should see a window pop up over here that says Lazy New Pack along with a few prompts. Just click No through all of them. These are mostly options for people who have played before and are loading old data from other older Lazy New Packs. So you can just ignore that. So here at the launcher, we have a whole bunch of options how we can set up our game. Uh, most of these we are going to ignore since this is probably your first time playing, but if you're ever curious as to what each button does, if you hover over them, you get these handy tool tips. So for our first fortress, we are going to want to turn cavens to no, entomb pets to no, and aquifers to no. So we turned these three off because for cavens, because dwarves enjoy digging holes, that's kind of their thing. And I don't want to bore you guys with the intimate details about tunnel design and theory. We are going to turn that off so dwarves accidentally don't kill themselves with cavens. For entomb pets, that's more of a quality of life issue. Whenever you build tombs, it automatically turns that on by default, so dwarves will go ahead and start burying all their pets before they actually bury dead dwarves. And since unburied dwarves mean you have a angry ghost haunting the place, it's usually something you want to get taken care of. And aquifers, uh, basically aquifers will be the bane of your existence if you're new to Dwarf Fortress. It's a uh, impenetrable layer of water. And if you've heard any horror stories about Dwarf Fortress and accidentally flooding the world, nine times out of ten it's because someone had an aquifer and they misused it in some way. While it's a free layer of water, dwarves hate to drink water, so you really don't need it anyway, unless you do want to flood the world and some advanced trap building. But for now, aquifers make embarking a uh, real pain in the butt, so we're just going to leave those off for now. And probably forever, because I personally hate aquifers. Now this next step is very important, especially considering that Dwarf Fortress's graphics are usually what turn off most people. So if you'd rather your game look like this, rather than this, here's how you change it. Let's go back to the launcher and click on this tab right here that says graphics. Here we have a variety of graphic packs that come along with the starter pack. Just pick one that you think sounds pretty. If you're not sure, I'd go with the Space Fox. I'm partial to that one. It's clean, it's simple, and it should be a good graphic pack for your first time playing. Once you are done the arduous task of selecting a graphics pack, just click on Install Graphics, select OK for the prompt, and you're good to go. Your graphics are no longer that hideous ASCII art, but a tolerable 
new graphics pack. Congratulations. So the next tab is the utility tab. This just toggles what programs we want to launch when we launch our Dwarf Fortress game. For now, we're going to ignore most of these with the exception of Dwarf Therapist. This is a very handy tool to have to reassign dwarf behavior and all that, but we'll explain more when we get to that step in the tutorial. Okay, just one step before we can actually get to playing the game, and this last part is more of an optional quality of life type thing. We are going to go to the advanced tab, and we're going to toggle a few options. We're going to turn off the intro movie, uh, we're going to set autosave to seasonal, and if there's anything else you feel like you would prefer on here, uh, feel free to click stuff and mess around with it. It's kind of hard to break. With all that done, we can finally get to playing the game. So click on that big button at the bottom there that says Play Dwarf Fortress. And hold on to your pants. Now, one of the first things you may notice when playing Dwarf Fortress is that by default it doesn't use the mouse at all just the keyboard so i'll have some keyboard prompts show up here on the screen to show you what keys you need to know controls here are pretty simple you use the up and down arrow keys to select what option you want and you press enter to choose set option now before you can get down to the business of actually building a fortress you are going to first have to have a world from which you can build that fortress in we can do this by going to create new world. Next, you'll have a warning message just reminding you that Dwarf Fortress is eternally in alpha. Just hit escape. This next part might be a little tricky because you do not use the enter key at all. You use the arrow keys for everything. So we are going to start with world size first. This just determines how big of a world it's going to generate. Uh, hit left or right to choose which size you want. I'm going to go with medium. After that, press down for history. Since this is your first time, we're going to stick with a short history that generates about 150 years worth of history. Once you get more experience, you can do long and very long, but word of warning, I've done longer ones and they can take over an hour to generate the entire world's history. So unless you have some time to kill, we're gonna keep it on short for now. As for the rest of them, uh, number of civilizations just determines the number of civilizations, be them elves, humans, dwarves, or goblins. Number of sites is just the number of settlements that the world will generate. Number of beasts is the level of beasts that roam the world, be them your lowly sheep to your horrifying undead elephants. Natural savagery just determines how scary things are going to be. So if you have low savagery, you'll have sheeps and unicorns. If you have high savagery, you'll have dire bears swooping down and eating your people. And finally, mineral occurrence just determines how many resources in the world. If you want to be rich uncle piggy banks, set it to everywhere and everyone and their mother will have na native gold and iron. Or set it to very rare so nobody gets anything if that's your cup of tea. Once you are happy with your options, press Y and world generation will begin. Now, here's what makes Dwarf Fortress so cool. Right now, the game is generating an entire world complete with maps, biomes, rivers, lakes, oceans, all individually named. And then it takes that landmass and it applies history. It puts figures in there and it simulates what the dwarves, humans, elves, and goblins do for however long you place. So in this instance, it's going to simulate 150 years of history 
And if you were so inclined, you could actually go into the game files and read all about the ancient dwarven history. And in turn, what dwarves are going to do is they're going to make reference to these events within the game, be it an artifact or if they engrave something, they may engrave an event that happened within the world's generated history, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Once the map is done generating, just press enter to finish it up. Or if you completely hate your map for whatever reason, you can press A to abort and erase any progress you've created thus far. Well folks, with that our world is created and now we are ready to create our first fortress. Stay tuned to my next video where we'll go into embarking and preparing. So please stay tuned for more.